Howdy folks, this is Mike Eastman with Blaze Trails Forgotten. You know, they, my father went up the Northwest Territory, the Canadian government and an outfitter that got the Northwest Territory, the McKinsey Mountain Range, had dad go on the first hunt, first person, him and a couple of his buddies to document and see if there was anything there that was worth hunting big game hunting and probably a lot of you have seen that footage and also Yeti did a, a kind of a documentary on dad and it was kind of short told about where he went and what he did but I've got some stories about that trip that need to be documented that were pretty unusual and pretty hair raising to tell you the truth some of them some of them were pretty funny so this is one of them it uh, has to do with a, a super cub and Warren Johnson, who was the pilot that went in there with Dad, what happened was uh, kind of crazy. And I want to flash back when I was in the Yukon. I was in uh, Whitehorse, uh, just getting ready to go into the bush for 30 days uh, to do some hunting and filming myself. Oh, this is 25, 30 years ago. And I was in the old Taku bar there in Whitehorse uh, when I was a young guy. I used to go in there with dad, and that was kind of the hangout for all these guys back then. That's We're talking about back in the 60s, okay? And I was sitting there having a beer, and this guy comes sit down next to me, and he, he introduced himself and asked my name. I told him Mike Eastman, and I was going in with Kozier to film and do some moose and uh, caribou hunting. And he said, oh, you uh, you related to Gordon Eastman? I said, oh, yeah, that was my dad. And he said, well, let me tell you a story. And he said, it's it's a classic up here. And and so he told me the story, which I already knew. But the point of this is sometimes when you go and do things and you don't think much about it like dad didn't, that it does re become a classic and people talk about it even today. And this is a story. This is uh, after two of the hunters that went in with Dad, Danny Gibbers and Eddie Parasol, went back. And so that just left Dad and uh, Johnson in there. Johnson had a Super Cub that he brought down from Alaska. He was a bush pilot up there. He was the one that went down in the Arctic with Dad as a pilot. And that's a whole different story. They almost lost their lives on that deal. Someday I'll tell you that story. So they're in there and they're filming. They uh, already, these guys already got their uh, rams. Dad was filming caribou and wolves and, you know, a few stuff like that. And then this is the last part of um, about the middle of September and they're starting to get, you know, fall. Everything was turning. Dad wanted to get that fall look. And so he was filming there. And one day, see, they were, they were camped on the old, uh, canal road that went up there. Now, the canal road took off from Alcon Highway. During World War II, they built this road or tried to to Yellowknife where all that gas and oil was, and they were going to put a, a canal pipeline down and into the United States from there. And so they had to build this road up through the McKenzie Mountain Range. We're doing that in World War II. Well, the, when the war quit, they hadn't completed the road, so they just abandoned everything, and, and every so miles there was a shack and all this equipment, trucks and stuff. They left all that stuff there and, and just dee 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 out out of the country, and that was it. So Gordon and uh, Johnson were using that road with their uh, Super Cub to fly up and down that road. It goes for 100 miles or so up there and filming and doing stuff. So it was kind of an artery there. Now, I want to tell you, just so you know, most of you do, back then there was no radios, radios, there was no satellite phones, there was no way to get a hold of anybody. Those two were back there by themselves. That was it, okay? Now, they knew Stan Burrell, who had the area, knew that they were back there, but that was about it, okay? They were on their own doing this. This is big-time DIY. So they went to land at their little shack and hit a big rock and blew the tire on one of the on on that super cub and when it did that the plane flipped forward and it bent the prop. So the prop is bent and they have no tire. So here they are, stuck back there hundreds of miles from anywhere, starting to get to be late fall, pretty soon the snow is going to come and here <clears throat> here they are. 
and Warren, he says, well, I got an idea. So they took, the, they took that tire off the plane and it was ripped. The tire was ripped about this long, about, you know, about that wide. So there's, you couldn't hold any air. Okay, no air, can't hold any. So what they did is they cut a whole bunch of willows. And you get this, guys. This is what <laughs> they cut a whole bunch of willows and they stuffed it in that tire and stuffed it to make it about the size of the tire. Then they took and they sewed that that slash up, tightened it up, and sewed it up, and so they had kind of a tire there made out of willows, okay? This is the truth, man, I'm telling you. Put it back on there. Well, now the second thing is it got a bent prop. Lucky this prop was metal instead of wood. So what, what do they do? They start pounding on it and trying to get it kind of half-assed to where it was straight. And Dad said they'd pound it on it, get about right, and he'd turn it over and it would wobble. And so they pounded on it some more and did this and that. And finally, he got it where, of course, it was wiggling, but it, it was flyable. Okay, it was just going like this, shaking the heck out of the airplane. But, but Warren Johnson said, I, I think I can get out with this thing. I think. If I can get off the ground with that tire, I think I can make it. <laughs> and he couldn't take Dad. He had to do it by himself because everything is just squirrely. Afraid if both of them got in there, it it wouldn't it wouldn't get off the ground, okay? And that would be the end of that. And he got one shot at this, okay? So I get dad told me he said he started up and went and he started down that road and he popped it up and he got up and off he went. And he, dad said it was rattling like this from that prop and had this funny noise. <laughs> He's flying off down down and gone and gone. And their dad stood all by himself in Northwest Territory, the only man in there. <laughs> and no phone, no radio, no nothing. Nobody knows he's there. He don't even know if, if, if old Warren would have crashed on the way there. Gordon would have been stuck there by himself. Oh, while we're in the middle of this, if you like this, Give me a thumbs up, and if you like to subscribe, subscribe so you won't miss any more of these tales of, of back in those days when things were a little more Western than they are now. Let's get back to our story. They probably would have come looking for him maybe in a month or maybe not. Who knows? Dad said his old stomach sunk as he watched that plane rattle off and disappear. So dad was in there first day. Okay, well, it takes him a day and get there. Second day, oh, well, he has to fix it. Third day, oh, well, he probably had more to do and had to fix it. Fourth day, well, I'm getting worried. I'm going to have to figure something out. And he's, he's sitting there the, the, about 10 o'clock on the fifth day, and he hears this plane coming. And he looked it up, and it was that, it was that super cub. My dad said it was, a, it was the most beautiful sound he'd ever heard. And it came in, landed, and it was it, it was Warren Johnson. He'd made it back there. They fixed the plane, had a little trouble flying it, finding a prop, got got a new prop, got a new tire, and came in, picked him up, off they went and headed and, and went back out. And and that's the story of that. Even still up today in the bar or taku bar, some of those old time outfitters and guides giggle and laugh about that. And, in fact, uh, they named a valley up there in Northwest Territory, Eastman's Valley, after Dad. So, so I'll see you next time on Mike Eastman's Blaze Trails Forgotten. Yeah.